your being here and praying for your loved ones is the most important and powerful thing that you can do. Here is why. By your baptism, you were made priest, prophet, and king or queen. The Bible says, the church teaches, you can look it up in the catechism, that by your baptism, you became part of the royal priesthood of Christ. So when you come to church, you are not here as a spectator, but you are here as a royal priesthood. I am here as part of the ministerial priesthood. The ministerial priesthood serves the church, but the royal priesthood has an important role as a priesthood. We know this because uh, in our first letter to the Hebrews, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. So the essence of a priest is to intercede, to intercede for people before God and, and the people. Jesus is such a priest, but in order to put this into context, we have to ask, who the heck is Melchizedek? Who is this guy? Why do we say that he is a priest forever? It says, you are a priest of ever, forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, some people will say, oh, you're a priest forever. That means that Melchizedek was never born and he never died. That's not the point. This uh, being a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, there, there was a different type of priesthood before the Levitical priesthood. The Levites became priests in the days of Moses. Moses went up the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, and while he was up there, the people fell back into idol worship, the idols of Egypt. And when Moses came down, Moses says, who will win us of this? And the Levites take out their swords and they go through the, the people and they kill all the people who are leading the worship of the idols. And when they come back, Moses doesn't say, I meant that figuratively. He says, by this blood, you have made yourself priests. And so the Levitical priesthood was not the original priesthood. To be a Levitical priest, you had to have a pure priestly line for 10 generations on your mother's and your father's side. You couldn't have any non-priest in there. Also, you were not allowed to function as a priest until you were 29 years old. And you ceased functioning as a priest when you were 51 years old. So you had about 20 years there. But this original priesthood, before the Levitical priesthood, the priesthood of Melchizedek, that was the priesthood of the firstborn male. The firstborn male acted as a priest for his family. They actually referred to him as father. Be a father to us. Now, sometimes God makes people priests who are not firstborn. Another homily. God speaks of Israel as his firstborn. When he sends them out into the nations, he sends them out as his firstborn. We refer to Jesus as Mary's firstborn. It doesn't mean that Mary had a second or a third child. It means that Jesus is part of this original priesthood, the priesthood of the firstborn. We call Jesus our Redeemer because it was the responsibility of the firstborn male to take care of the family. If you get thrown into prison, you could petition your oldest brother or uncle, or you could say, hey, you're my redeemer. You have to come and help me. You gotta get me out. If you got sold into slavery, they had to pay the price. If you lost your land, 
It was their responsible to buy it back for the family so that they didn't lose the property. So we refer to Jesus as our Redeemer. It's because he is the firstborn. But remember, you were baptized into Christ Jesus. And so you are priests according to the order of Melchizedek. And this is the most important thing that you do because we are uniting ourselves with the sacrifice of Christ. And we are offering prayers for other people, for the forgiveness of their sins. So you are a priest, and your priesthood lasts forever. You will continue to intercede and to pray for people and offer sacrifices, this sacrifice, for people. Because you were baptized into Christ Jesus. So we don't want to waste our priesthood.